The motion of any object can be explained in terms of the forces acting on it using Newton's laws of motion. In the case of projectiles and ignoring air resistance, the only force acting on objects in the air is the gravitational force downwards. This downward force means also a downward acceleration. No matter what the mass of the body is, the downward acceleration on all objects will be 10 meters per second squared. We can write this as minus 10 meters per second squared if we use the convention that downward is negative and upwards is positive. Since the acceleration of the body is constant, we can use the kinematics equations to describe mathematically the motion of the object. Let us remind ourselves of the four kinematics equations. V equals U plus A T. That means final velocity equals initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. V squared equals U squared plus 2 A S. S is the displacement or the distance moved in a straight line. Displacement S equals U T plus one half A times T squared. Displacement S equals one half U plus V times T. Note that U is the initial velocity and V is the final velocity. So when you add the two velocities together and divide by two, you get the average velocity. When an object is released from rest, we know that the initial velocity u is zero meters per second. And we know that since it's free falling, the acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared. However, the velocity at a particular time and the displacement at a particular time will change depending on the value of the time. U and A, initial velocity and acceleration, remain constant throughout the body's motion. However, at different times, the displacement and the velocity of the body are different. Let us take the example where T equals one second. That means the ball was released from rest and after one second, we now need to find what the displacement of the body is and what the velocity of the body is. We have numbered the kinematics equations to help with our explanation. To find the velocity of the body after one second, we can use equation one. Using equation one and substituting into it, we have the initial velocity equals zero, the acceleration equals minus 10, and the time, one second, gives us a velocity of minus 10 meters per second. The minus refers to the fact that it's moving downwards, and downwards is negative, and the 10 refers to the size of the velocity vector. It is 10 meters per second downwards. We can also find the displacement of the body after falling for one second using equation three. Substituting into equation three, the initial velocity is zero, so whatever the time is, the product of ut will be zero, plus one half times the acceleration, which is negative 10, times the time squared, which is one second squared, gives us a displacement of minus five meters. The minus refers to the fact that it's a downward displacement. So for a body falling vertically, we know that the initial velocity and the acceleration are always fixed, but the three variables, velocity, displacement, and time, vary with each other. In fact, if we know any one of these three, we can use the kinematics equations to find the other two. We have already seen the example where we knew time and we found displacement and velocity. In a similar manner, if we know the velocity, we can find the displacement that will have that velocity and the time that will have that velocity. Or, if we know the displacement, then we can find the velocity of that displacement and the time it took to get to that displacement. 
To do that, we will need to reset our kinematics equations. For example, if we want to know what the velocity and time are when the body has displaced itself 20 meters downwards, better to write this as minus 20, then we can use equation 2. Substituting into equation 2, acceleration is minus 10 and the displacement is minus 20. We get that the velocity is the square root of 400, which can either be plus or minus 20 meters per second. Of course, we will choose the fact that it's minus 20 meters per second because it's falling downwards. So to find the time that the object has displaced itself 20 meters downwards, we can use equation 3. Substituting into the equation 3, the displacement, of course, that we want to know the time for is 20 meters downwards, so we label it as minus 20. The ball has been dropped from rest to the initial velocity is 0, so anything multiplied by 0 is 0. Acceleration is minus 10, and the time is our unknown. This leads to a time of being 2 seconds. Of course, time is always scalar. It can never have a positive value. So remember, if an object is in free fall, the acceleration is constant, negative 10 meters per second squared. That means that we can use the kinematics equations to describe mathematically its motion. And the initial velocity of 0 meters per second squared can never change through the motion. The acceleration is always constant. And so V, S, and T vary together. Finally, we can find what the velocity, uh, at a known velocity, what the displacement and the time is to get to that known velocity. So our problem now becomes an object is released from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. At what time will the velocity be minus 90 meters per second? In other words, moving downwards with 90 meters per second. To do this, we can use again equation one. Using equation 1 and substituting into it gives us a time of 9 seconds. So to find out how far the ball will fall when dropped from rest so that its velocity is 90 meters per second downwards, we can use equation 2. So substituting into equation 2, the velocity is 90 meters per second. That's minus 90 squared. The initial velocity is 0 times 2 times the known acceleration of minus 10 times the unknown value of the displacement s. This gives us a value of 405 meters. That means that the velocity of the ball will be 90 meters per second when the ball has fallen a distance of 405 meters. Remember that this excludes air resistance. So to summarize, dropping an object from rest on Earth means that it's subject to an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, irrespective of its mass. That is provided that we ignore the air resistance. Therefore, its motion can be described mathematically using the four kinematics equations, whereby the initial velocity and the acceleration always remain constant. And the values of V, S, and T very simultaneously. Knowing any one of these three variables, V, S, and T, will enable you to find the other two using the kinematics equations.